Hello and welcome to part one of another episode of Spurverts. I'm here with Craig and Emma as usual. Now, first up, we are talking about the weekend, the Watford win. What a win that was. How important that was. Craig, give me your thoughts. Uh, it was a very massive win. Very, very. I was happy with it because I felt like they they changed their formation to kind of stifle us. Yeah. They put five in the midfield, they dropped Troy Deeney, and it didn't work. I mean, what I think what, what, what for the better when they play 4-4-2? They changed yeah, it in the second half, they were a bit better. But the fact that we grabbed a, a, a winner, a late winner, should I say, it wasn't even late, what time was it? It wasn't particularly late. It wasn't late, but the fact that we <laughs> grabbed a winner, Kieran Trippier Second grabbed half, a winner yeah. in the game was good. It, it was it was a battle, but we, we proved that we could actually get a win against a team like that. Yeah. That's set up to not let us win. I know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's another indication. We've talked about this before at previous times of the season. The old Spurs would have caved, would have bottled, wouldn't have scored. Yeah. Because Watford did play in the first half, played really, really well. Um, Sanchez Flores did have his, his tactics absolutely spot on and he totally stifled us. But we just kept going, kept going and kept going. And you, you knew that goal was going to come. Pochettino, after the match as well, talked very specifically about the fans and said a massive thank mm. you to the fans. He said the fans helped in the second half. Yeah. When they kept behind us, they helped us get the win. That impressed me a lot, actually. Me too. I mean, I, obviously, I was there and we were giving it as much as we could. And it was great to see how in the second half, people's heads didn't drop. The singing carried on. And we need to do that now every game. That never every, happens. Every that never final. used to happen at all at Wild no. Lane. We'd get so impatient and angry. Yeah. And every time we'd lose the ball mm. or something, it would kick off and we'd get on the players' backs. But now, that, yeah. everyone believes. Everyone How crazy is it that it was like nil-nil and, and we wasn't worried that we was actually going to concede? Like usually you're yeah. like, oh, if we don't get that goal, they're going to concede. But I was never, I knew we was going to exactly. score. Although, mind you, having said that, when it was 1-0, like the longer it went on, the, that last five minutes of the match, like from about 88 minutes and then the three yeah. minutes of stoppage time, got through. Dini was header in the Thank like... God it was Dini who was that <laughs> yeah. slow. It did actually ball. feel like the oh, yeah. longest five minutes of my life. Vimmer recovered but... very well, to be he fair. He did, yeah. He's, he's been great, hasn't he? Oh, um, can we talk about Vimmer? We can talk about Vimmer. Oh, well, seamless. He's next on the list. Don't guys. just throw uh, these things together, you know. How good was he? He's like, been great. He's been great. He's, he's he's slotted in perfectly, hasn't yeah. he? We've barely even noticed. Yeah. And we were all a bit, we were concerned. We were sat of here course. a few weeks ago, very concerned about Jan. But Vimmer, I mean, good, good with the great. ball at his feet, uh, fast, strong. Doesn't he, panic. Doesn't panic at all. Doesn't very panic. cool. Clean sheet king. Is he better than Jan? No. No. <laughs> no. I mean, no, but, well, hang no, on. But no, not at the moment, days, but does he have days. the potential to? I don't Possibly. think so. He's got, all the, he's got all the same qualities and he's younger. Yeah, he's younger definitely. But I think, yeah, I mean, he's got so many caps internationally. Yeah. He's proven in that aspect. Um, he's playing in the best team in the world, officially. But the thing about Yannis as well, good. when I spoke to Onoma, and yes, I spoke to Onoma, oh, I know him. Oh, little um, name drop these No, no, but there. I asked him who's the most skillful person in the Spurs team, and he said Jan Vertonghen, yeah, which I was actually. surprised about. He's a mm. centre-half. You don't really expect that. You'd think someone yeah, like yeah. Lamella, but he said Jan Vertonghen's amazing with the ball at his feet. Plus, if you go on 4-4-2, you can actually see his skills. Yeah, on a video, he's pretty good. Oh, well, that seals it. Fair then. enough. So, advertising <laughs> other things. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, what about Kieran Trippier? How do you feel about Trippier? How, he's surely the man of the match, right? Absolutely Trippier. man yeah. of the match. Yeah, he he was. was fantastic on Saturday. And I'm so Everywhere. pleased for him. I mean, not least as well, because he scored the goal as well. Quite he loud. scored the goal. But um, I remember when we bought Trippier and there was a lot of people going, why are we buying somebody from Burnley? Like, what is this? I was this one, one of those people. Up. One nil Watford. I was yeah. one of those people. And you I were. defended him in the debate. Admittedly, Trippier. they conceded 53 goals like we did and got relegated. So I had a case, but he he's done well. Get him in a proper team, it's mate. An, it's yet another it's example. 19, 19 just goals. Saying. It's yet another example of Poch seeing something in a player which maybe the rest of us haven't necessarily seen. And Poch is right again. We just need to bow down to this. But man's also, that's what it is. I mean, that is what it, is. it massively helps that he's fresh. He, he's he's yeah. able to play the game fresh because we've got such good cover. Yeah. In the fullback positions, we're able to always have fresh fullbacks. Yeah. Which means that it's that means a much better situation. Well, what, than what was interesting is for the goal. The way he like busted a gut to get in there, yeah. as if he was like a forward, yeah, like he brilliant. ran the length of the field to get in that box. He was waving ferociously yeah. to get that ball. Deli Ali obviously me. just came on and just said, like, I know where he's going. Oh, I, I can see oh, everything. God, yeah. I'm I mean, not we, dizzy anymore, mate. I was going to say, we, 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 we can't let the goal go by without mentioning Deli Ali's. Yeah. Part, the mixed race I mean, Perlo, oh, you know. Just plus Dembele. God. Dembele's passed to Deli Ali. Dembele's passed to Deli Ali, and then Deli Ali's still outside of the foot, across the box. I mean, it was just. That's what I was going to say, though. A bit of me, Dembele, a bit was my man of the match of it. But I had to give it to Trippier because he scored the goal and he whipped it across. Dembele, Dembele was Dembele phenomenal. Dembele was brilliant. Yeah. Again. He always is. Again. He always is now. You know, he he is. doesn't lose the ball. Um, did doesn't. you see what Trippier said in this interview afterwards about how he was sort of like, I didn't really know what was happening. Yeah. I was just there 
right by the goal. Suddenly the ball comes to me. I'd, I'd, run, I'd run there because I'd seen Dele have the ball. He's being modest. He was screaming for it. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. You know, it reminded me of when Eric Dyer scored that goal on his debut. Yeah. In the post-match interview, he said, I was generally thinking, oh, God, what am I doing this far up the pitch? I'm going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> and then the ball came to me. It took around the keeper and smashed it in the goal. Humility. Love it. Good love guys. It. I love these guys. Love good guys. guys. Now, guys. Um, some less good news. Uh, there are rumours, Emma, that Pochettino is going to Man United. Oh, now, tell us about this. crying out loud. I'm going to give this very short shrift. Some of the newspapers have suggested that Manchester United, unsurprisingly, are taking a little bit of an interest in our amazing manager. Just and that he could enough, be off in be. the summer. They could dangle a nice big contract no in his chance. face and off he goes. I can give you multiple reasons why this is not going to happen. Absolutely, I don't doubt that the newspaper stories are true. That Man United are very interested in yeah. Pochettino. Why and wouldn't are monitoring. you be? Why wouldn't you be Why interested? wouldn't they be? And probably the same with Chelsea as well, let's be honest. Everyone. Why wouldn't they be? But Pochettino is not going anywhere. And I will tell you why. The first thing is, what we've seen with this manager, he values loyalty actually really quite highly. And uh, I feel, well, I feel like he's been in a kind of two-way relationship with the club and with Levy especially. And I think he values the, the trust that's been put in him. Secondly, I know we talk about Man United are a bigger club. Chelsea... Maybe you could say they're a bigger club, it's very difficult to tell. But the only thing these guys can really offer them is more money to spend. Mm. In terms of having control over your transfer policy and control over the players that you sign and that you play, Pochettino is not going to have it any better than he's having it at Tottenham right now. And he is a man, we have seen with the guys that he's got rid of over the last 12 months, he's a man who likes to be in charge of his team. They could actually offer him more money for himself as well though. Which is always a bit of the carrot. But if, but I, I imagine that if that came up and we all found out he's being offered more in a contract by Man United, all the Spurs fans will chip in, and we'll just give him a tenner each just to yeah, keep him at the club. That would work. But oh, I mean, definitely I, twenty. I, we all, yeah, exactly. Fine, twenty. Yeah, you give twenty. Like I said, we, I think we have to, we have to accept now that people are going to be interested in us, in our manager, in our players. Especially when we win the league. Well. Especially okay, when we uh, win the league. Why would he leave? I mean, <laughs> thing is, why would he, he just worked so hard to build this? Team, yeah. this yeah. squad, get rid of the chaff and keep the wheat, guys. Who's the chaff? <laughs> Adebayor, Soldado, Townsend. Kabul. The list goes Kabul. on. Paulinho. Yeah. Fazio. Oh, yeah. But he's not strictly gone yet, but you know. Yeah. Why would he, he's worked so hard. Why would he then, after sort of one year of having the squad he finally wants, why would no, he go, you know what, I'm going to start in, again. He's in the middle of building a project. And I exactly. think he says, we've seen. Got a new stadium coming. The way that it went in the January transfer window as well, we've seen that he is thinking all about the long term. He said as much when he came out after the transfer window was closed and explained the reasons that he didn't want to sign a striker. He's all about the long term. That does not sound to me like a man who's about to up sticks and leave in the summer to go to Manchester United. Exactly. So I think we needn't worry. No, about you no, guys. No, no, no. I'm confident. I'm not worried. Let He's us know staying. your thoughts in the comments, whether you think Poch is going to leave. He's not, but let us know anyway. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the Watford victory? What about Trippier and Vimmer's performances? Let us know in the comments. Subscribe if you're new. Give us a like and we will see you in part two. Hello, welcome to Spurverts Part 2. I'm still with Craig and I'm still with Emma. This time we are talking about the busy period that we've got coming up fixtures-wise. 